All right, everybody. This is Austin at the Best I Can Afford Antiques Channel. Man, went to the antique store yesterday. My wife was like, don't spend more than what I gave you. <laughs> Which, you know, that doesn't sound like a warning that a normal person would receive, does it? Okay. <laughs> and yes, she gave me my allowance and I spent it at the antique store. That's what happened. I don't want to talk about it. But I think I did good. Okay. $132. Let's let's discuss briefly this giant bowl in the background here. Okay? Do you see you see how big that is? It's decorated on the inside, which isn't entirely rare, but it's not super common either. I mean it's hit or miss, you know. But the ones that are decorated on the inside, they're worth more. Look at how well that bird's actually done. I mean, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these Chinese pieces, I find too many faults with them to, to spend much money on. But, but this one was pretty nice, and you know, after twenty percent off, it was only, uh, it was only f uh, sixty dollars. So, I mean, there's no way I couldn't resell it for at least sixty dollars. It's kind of neat. Came with its own stand. Came with its own sticker from the Jing Fa studio in a, probably more like a factory in uh, China. This is definitely a Chinese piece of cloisonnet. I'm sure we've discussed the differences before, but uh, now that I've got a big piece like that, I'm going to gather up the little Chinese pieces I have and we'll have a discussion about the differences between Chinese and Japanese cloisonnet. Um, we got a couple of little... Uh, a, they're decorated like Amari. Um, a little Amari plate here. It's got nothing on the back, but it does have a nice back. I mean, this was actually, I think, maybe fired at a studio, you know, in a kiln. I always like to see that little rough edge right there, you know. It's not part of the glaze, if you see that little rush, rough edge. It doesn't look like, you know, dinnerware anyway. Um, and then I got this, oof, it was only taped, don't worry. Got this big Amari charger, which I'm calling these Amari. I think they po probably count as Amari, but I do think these are like 20th century Amari, which does us some good because we can compare it to the other Amari pieces we have. And, uh, you know, we'll know even better what we're looking for, what we're not looking for. There's a little mark back here. So we'll be able to track down the manufacturer of this. That's pretty neat. It's got a nice, it's got a nice rim. It's got a, hold on. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll get there eventually. Yeah, you see that? That's actually not bad looking. I mean, somebody was actually still making these, you know, it wasn't a, wasn't just a machine stamping them out, I guess. I mean, maybe some parts of it, I assume. But yeah, nice big old Amari charger. I quite like this little vase back here, but let's talk about Let's talk about this Amari ginger jar that perfectly matches the uh, the charger I just showed you. So I just saw a ginger jar exactly like this sell for $100 on eBay. Now all the little Amari pieces I have shown you and I'm about to show you, they all came in the same box and it was just marked $20 for a box. So if I would have just bought this box of Amari and conceivably made a hundred dollars on this ginger jar alone which is in perfect shape nothing's wrong with it it's all good it's even got little foamy stickers up here and it's got a wooden base attached to the bottom which I mean like you know I mean okay whatever it's obviously made it's the exact same pattern as this charger so so obviously they made the charger and the ginger jar, so we also know who made the ginger jar. So yeah, just saw this bad boy sell for a hundred dollars. One exactly like it anyway. I mean, not exactly like it. I don't think it had the wood base. So let's just keep going through this real quick. No, I don't always buy this stuff just to sell. Like some of this stuff's just for me. But uh, I mean, this stuff obviously I want to make videos about it because I've already made several videos on Amari. And, uh, you know, if we can expand our knowledge base, that's just a better chance that we'll collect something awesome when we get the chance to. Now this. 
I don't know exactly what this is, but it's hand done, it's enameled. You see the enamel decoration on it. It's got a super handsome, funny looking little bird there. He's enamel too. You can see his you can see how he's done there. I love putting this stuff in the glare for you guys so you can actually see that it's got like shape and texture. And then you see, of course, the bamboo. I mean, that's done easily just as well as the rest of this. It's such a handsome little piece, you know, and this was marked like $18 or something. But like I said, I paid $132 for the whole group. So um, let me think about how many items that was real quick. We'll just, I like doing the average because I don't mind spending a little bit of money on some pieces and I don't mind spending a little bit of money on other pieces. But as long as my average comes out, to where I'd want it to be for any of these items. I'm, I'm totally cool with that. Hopefully the average will make it so that I'm very happy with the price of some of these pieces and not entirely disappointed with the prices of the other pieces. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> let, me, let me count real quick. Uh, one, two, three pieces of Amari that I've already shown you. Uh, that little vase right there. So four, five, six, seven, plus a set of candlesticks. So we're going to call it eight. <clears throat> so eight items for 136 so yeah less than $20 an item by far I mean you know maybe $15 an item which when you get to that or the hundred dollar ginger jar you know that's nothing but profit if I sell all this stuff so yeah um, let's wrap up the Amari pieces because I think what I got and this is the reason I bought the box actually I believe I got Dutch Amari now, you might be thinking to yourself, like, Austin, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Why would you think anything you had was Dutch, and why would you think it was Amari if it was Dutch? Well, people in Holland, um, did I do that right? Are people that are Dutch from Holland? Am I? Oh, ooh, okay. All right, well, I'm just going to pretend and move along. <laughs> You gotta admit, I'm better at that stuff than most of the people from America. You can cut me some slack here. I think these are Dutch Amari. So, people in Holland made the boots off of Amari because they really liked the style. And uh, they would typically decorate it with some gold. Um, there was typically a white background. And I think this kind of dark blue and kind of peachy peach color. You know, it's more of like a rust orange, but it gets to sort of a peach in there some places I think this is uh and you know I've never seen a piece of Dutch Amari before so I think that that's what these are and these are why I bought the box of $20 Amari and interestingly enough they're they're somewhat different on the bottom and even a little bit so up here they're not even quite the same width so yeah they're definitely handmade and I mean I think they're Dutch Amari and I think that's pretty neat that I got those because now we can talk about yet another type of Amari which uh, you know instead of the Chinese or Japanese making Amari for export uh, people in Holland just started making their own which I think is also a very beautiful art and uh, some of the some of the Dutch Amari that I've seen just online, I mean, has been pretty incredible. Uh, you know, they were they were doing their own thing for sure. It's very nice stuff. So we'll talk more about those once I oh, I did just notice is that broken? I do you think maybe? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think that's got a old repair in it. But you know, no big deal. These things are, however old, those might be like a hundred years old. I'm really not positive. I hardly know anything about Dutch Amari. Look at this little white, I think uh, the term would be pressed glass. Because there's a seam running up it. So it probably got thrown into a mold and then blown out, I don't know whether by lungs or, or a machine or what. But it looks like it would have filled the uh, mold globe there. And there's a seam on each side and then some gold decoration a little bit more gold gilding and then someone just hand painted a fantastic I'm gonna say European scene 
I don't know how old this is or anything, but once I saw the hand-painted scene on there, I was like, well... Well, for $10 on the sticker, you're coming home with me. Yeah, I don't know, though. I want to say it's maybe milk glass. And, uh, I don't know. I think it's pretty interesting. I think, uh, I think the artist did pretty well. Good proportioning. Nice, um, gives you a perfect impression of what you are looking at without being an entirely accurate uh, painting. So yeah, I like that quite a bit. <clears throat> I think other people will probably like that too. It tends to be <clears throat> that if I grab something, other people are probably going to like it. So this is the last piece I got at the antique store yesterday. It is a piece of rose medallion slash famille rose. I'm going to say it's like early republic, maybe maybe just into the Qing dynasty. Maybe like 1890 to 1920. This is not my area of expertise, but I do have a general idea. And I think I'm correct. Um, you see how much enameling has gone on here. It's not uh, it's not just painted on. You can see the you can see the shapes moving, you know what I mean? You see that beautiful little bird right there. Lovely little people. There don't appear to be any chips or cracks or anything on this. I love the little blue bird in the inside the rose medallion. <laughs> this is a super handsome piece. Look at how well that bird's done in enamel. Yeah, this is a very nice piece. I did very well on this. I mean, especially at the average price, but this only had a sticker price of $35. And I saw immediately how much enamel was on it. And we did that. Obviously handmade. There's nothing, like, perfect about this inside forming or anything. It's all ridgy, nubbly, pitted. So, yeah. We did good on that. So that's the lid. And that's the bottom. That looks pretty legit to me. You know, you've got some uh you've got some iron oxide rings where the glaze kind of meets the uh foot rim. It's just a little bit dirty. It's not like you know, they didn't church it up, they didn't make it try and or they didn't try to make it look like it was a million years old. It doesn't even have a mark on the bottom, so they weren't trying to falsely represent it as anything. So that's super neat. I like that quite a bit. I don't like uh you know, so many Chinese pieces lie to you. I don't know I don't know what the deal is there, but but yeah, a bunch of enamel decorations on the outside. So yeah, when I tell you that everything here was $132, I'm sure you start to see that the value of what I got is far exceeding that. I mean, I don't know how much this would sell for, but I know it's worth more than $35, which is uh, what I would need to recoup after I sold that ginger jar if it sells for the, um, you know, historically, <laughs> historic price. So this is the inside. Now, when I took that lid off and saw that this inside portion was all enameled too, I was like, all right, well, that's kind of special, isn't it? So I don't know if I've seen a, I don't know if I've seen a lidded dish like this first, but I don't think I've seen a lidded dish with a bunch of inside enameling done. So yeah, I think this is pretty good. I think it's a, I think it's a high quality piece. I mean, not the highest quality, but it's it's correct. It is um, early, and it is beautiful, and they took extra steps, you know? There's no reason they had to decorate the inside of this dish. It was supposed to sit there with a lid on it. So there's no reason you would have to decorate the inside unless it was just as a special little treat for the rich customer that was buying it from you. So yeah, that's what we got at the old antique store yesterday, plus some Amari stuff. I like that quite a bit. I feel good about that. Oh, I really like this little vase here. I'm wondering, 
I'm wondering why he's so special. He's small, crackle glazed. Maybe he's, uh. I'm wondering if he's not, uh. Maybe Kinkazan. Maybe he's Satsuma. I don't know, though. It's such an individual fence on the bottom. I mean, obviously, this isn't a masterpiece, but it is a very nice little. Very nice little vase, and depending on how early it is, I mean, maybe it is a masterpiece. You know, this guy did all this decoration before anyone else ever had. Who knows? But yeah, this is Austin, Best I Can Afford Antiques channel. Hopefully I'm uh, occasionally proving to you that I can spot out neat 